Here we have two equations, a top one and a bottom one. I'm going to tell you they mean the exact same thing, but I want you, using everything you know now about equations, to tell me how are these the same, how are they different, and what can we learn about the bottom equation from the top one if we know they're the same. So today's objective is to solve literal equations. You already know how to solve an equation. That part's not so hard. So we just have to learn what a literal equation is and how we can apply this idea of solving to a literal equation. Back to our first example here. And here we see a normal type of equation that we've solved like the whole time we've been doing this work. And then here we see an example of what's called a literal equation. And you've probably been able to tell what the difference between a literal equation and a more typical equation. And it's that a literal equation contains very few, if any, numbers. And you'll see these a lot in the more advanced math and science courses because you can pack a ton of information into a literal equation, which is really the whole point of an equation is to express a relationship in the most compact way possible. We also have to understand what the word literal means. Uh, this is not like, you know, I'm thinking like a valley girl being like, ah, this was like literally an equation, but rather a different form of the definition of literal meaning relating to the letters of the alphabet. So if you were to look up literal in the dictionary, like the fifth or sixth definition would be this relating to the letters of the alphabet. So a literal equation is just an equation that has a whole bunch of the alphabet in it and not really a lot of numbers. Just like every other equation, the whole point of this is to show relationships. And in a literal equation, we've got nothing but variables, so we're showing nothing but all these different relationships uh, between these ideas. Uh, so just to give you some or a classic example of a literal formula is this formula right here which you can probably tell me a little bit about in terms of where it comes from. So this is Einstein's uh, formula for the equivalence of energy and mass uh, made famous by his theory of relativity and is like the one literal equation that you can count on pretty much everybody having heard. Uh, but all this thing does is it shows a relationship. E stands for energy. M is mass and C is the speed of light which is a really really giant number so the equation itself the literal equation e equals mc squared shows the relationship between energy between mass and between the speed of light um, and the neat thing about this is is we can rearrange it to make any of those three the most important idea um, in the equation. So we're not limiting ourselves to just focusing on E or M or C like we would if we had numbers to replace the others. This equation gives us the relationship between all three. For example, in this one, that energy is equivalent to mass times the speed of light squared. So if I take a little bit of mass and turn it directly into energy, this will tell me how much. Or if I take some energy and turn it into mass, which is also possible, this tells you how much mass I can create from a certain amount of energy. So when we go to solve these, two big differences. The first is that with a literal equation, you're not going to be able to simplify all that much. Normally when we're doing equations, we can simplify a lot because we can crunch all the numbers together, turn two numbers into one separate one. But with literal equations, we're gonna have a lot of variables, won't be able to do that. The other part in solving a literal equation is because there are going to be so many variables, you have to watch the instructions to know which one is important, or you have to know your situation to know which one is important. Um, so we'll have to know which variable to solve for, and we have to realize we can't simplify like we've been doing before. But other than this, the technique is exactly the same. Every single thing you've learned about solving equations now applies uh, to literal equations. So let's look at a couple of examples. First example, we want to solve for v given that vt equals d. And the first thing I want to point out is that this has real physical meaning. 
V is speed or velocity, T is time, and D is distance. So now if I have my speed or velocity, if I have a direction with it, and my time, I can multiply those together and tell how far something traveled. So for instance, if I know I'm going 30 miles per hour, and I know I did that for two hours, I can multiply those together and find out that I went 60 miles. So there is a relationship between speed, time, and distance that is shown right here. Now I want to solve for V, which means I want to isolate V. V should be by itself on one side of the equation. So I have to look at what's paired with V that's keeping it from being by itself. And there's a T over there. And if I look, they're written right next to each other, which means I'm multiplying. So if I've got V times T and I want to get rid of the T, the inverse operation of multiplication is division. So I would divide both sides by T. The T's are going to cancel out, leaving me with just a V on this side. And over here, I would have D distance divided by time. And these are not like terms. I can't combine them. I can't simplify like I would do if these were both numbers. So this is as good as it gets. I have solved for V. V is isolated on one side of the equation. So this is my literal equation solved for V. And remember, it has meaning. This tells us that to find speed, all we have to do is take our distance that's traveled divided by the time that it took to travel it. Let's look at another. Solve for L, given that P is equal to 2 times L plus W. If you think back, you might even know what this formula means. P stands for our perimeter. L is length, and W is width. So again, this has real meaning if I have a rectangle, and I know its perimeter, I know its length, and I, I know its width. They're going to be related by this equation. In this case, I want to solve for L. That is, I want to get the L by itself. And this is kind of interesting, because what this means once I solve this, that means that if I know the perimeter and the width, if I know two out of those three, I'll be able to find the third, which is really the deep use of these literal equations, is if I know what two, or if I know what, all, what one of the variables are, I can figure out what the missing one is. So now to solve this, I do just what we've been doing. First, I see distributive properties, so let's do that. And I get P equals 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. Now I want to isolate the L, so I have to get rid of anything that's being added or subtracted. So I'm going to subtract 2W from both sides. And now we see that over here, I cannot simplify that. The best I can do is leave it as P minus 2W equals 2 times the length. And now... What I want to do is to get that L by itself, i got to get rid of the 2, and I do that by dividing by 2. And I actually have two ways of writing this. The easiest way is to just put it all over 2, and that's going to cancel. And so I would get P minus 2W over 2 is equal to L. And that's perfectly fine. Or you can remember that when I divide by 2, that's the same thing as taking put this in a little box here so you know it's separate, uh, equals 2 times the length. And I divide by 2 that I would do that by every term. That's another way to write this that would be correct. So I have my p over 2, which I can't do anything with. These 2s, though, would cancel each other out. And so length is also p over 2 minus w. Either one of those works. If this right here confused you, feel free to ignore it and just do what we saw right there. So let's look at this one. Uh, we have yet another one from physics. For this, Ke stands for kinetic energy. That is the energy that is associated with motion. And we have m, which is mass, and v, which is, again, speed. And this time, we are asked to solve for m, which means we have to isolate that m. So now 
we have to get rid of this 0.5 and we have to get rid of this v squared. Let's start with the 0.5. It turns out that we are multiplying by 0.5, so what we're going to do is divide by 0.5, and that can't simplify. There's no way these things are not like terms. We can't simplify that over there, so it just stays there, leaving me with mv squared. And now I have to divide by what I'm multiplying by over here that keeps the m from being by itself. That would be the v squared. So if I divide by v squared, that's going to go away. What does it look like to divide by v squared over here? When this happens, if you're dividing, that thing is just going to appear in the bottom. So I would have ke over 0 0.5 v squared equals m. So again, everything that I'm dividing by just appears down here in the bottom all multiplied together. So I divided by 0 0.5 and I divided by v squared. So they hang out in the bottom part of the fraction together, and there is my solved equation relating mass to kinetic energy and speed. Finally, we have this right here, which is a law that relates the volume of a gas to a temperature of a gas. I believe that's Charles' law. Ask your science teacher to be sure. I haven't seen that in a few years. So looking at this, I've got... V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. And I've got something new on this, which is this right here called a subscript. Now a superscript written over top represents an exponent, but a subscript is just a description. So this V1 means the first volume. This V2 means the second volume. T1 means the first temperature. T2 means the second temperature. Literally as easy as that. <laughs> Literally. You're welcome. We want to solve for V1, which means we want to get that V1 by itself. The thing that's keeping us from having V1 by itself is that we're dividing by T1. So to undo dividing by T1, we simply multiply by T1. And so these cancel, leaving me with V1 by itself. And over here, I've got V2, T2 times T1. When I take a fraction and I multiply it by a whole number, I can just list that whole number up in the top. Just like that. Just like everything that was divided goes on the bottom, everything that's multiplied can go on top. And now we see that V1 is equal to V2, T1 divided by T2. So to recap, a literal equation is an equation that has a whole bunch of letters in it, literal in this case meaning related to uh, letters of the alphabet. And so we have this big old equation of just letters. We'll be told what variable we're supposed to isolate, in this case b, and we know that it's not going to simplify as easily as we'd like. So let's take ax plus by equals c and solve for b. That means we want to isolate this b right here. So we get rid of anything that's added or subtracted first. We're adding an ax, so we need to subtract an ax from both sides. Those will cancel out, leaving me with just by equals, and these can't simplify. They just have to stay as they are. Now I'm trying to get the b by itself, but here I'm multiplying it times y, so to undo multiplying times y, I would divide by y, and I find that b is equal to c minus ax divided by y. And now this is solved for b. b is on one side of the equation by itself. I have a big old mess of stuff over here that can't be simplified, but that is okay because we have solved a literal equation.